John Stewart is a liberal TV host in the USA, and last week he pulled off one of the most impressive interviews I think I've ever seen. He was interviewing Larry Summers, who was Treasury Secretary under Bill Clinton and Director of the National Economic Council under Barack Obama. The background to the disagreement between Summers and Stewart is that Summers wants the US Federal Reserve to aggressively hike interest rates to tackle inflation. John Stewart knows that only works by intentionally increasing unemployment, and he's not convinced that's a good idea. We had massive stimulus and an economy that could only produce so much. We had huge levels of demand, and those huge levels of demand kept pushing up prices and pushing up wages. But ultimately, it was, uh, you put too much water in the bathtub, the bathtub overflows. You put too much demand into uh, the economy, and you get high and rising uh, prices. But the San Francisco Fed says that is, demand is maybe 30 to 35 percent of the inflation. Wages are really around 20 percent of the inflation. There's a huge corporate profit aspect to it. There's a huge supply chain aspect to it. But our method for controlling it seems really much more focused on wages and employment. There's certain sicknesses you can have where there's a drug and it has side effects. And everybody hates the side effects and no doctor wants their patient to suffer the side effects. But if you don't address the sickness, you're gonna have a bigger problem down the road. No doctor wants their patient to suffer side effects. That was Larry Summers sounding really genuinely compassionate about the people who his favoured policy would throw on the unemployment heap. This is Larry Summers saying interest rates hikes. Interest rates should be hiked even if it's painful for workers because in the long term, the alternative would be worse. Again, John Stewart isn't really taking him at his word. The stock market assets have gone up 150%. CEO pay has gone up 1,500%. Workers' wages haven't gone up at all. I think you're misdiagnosing the sickness. First, John, inequality is a terrible thing. The most serious problem the American economy has has been the cleavages between those like you and me who are very fortunate. That's why we need a strategy of strengthening uh, labor power uh, in the economy. The question, though, is, is it an issue that somebody who's control is over setting interest rates and printing money can do much about. Now, you could say... Boom! Boom! You could say that leaving macroeconomic management to a central bank would be a mistake. And you'd be right if we gave this responsibility back to governments, as Maynard Keynes suggested, we could tax the rich when inflation gets high instead of giving the job to central banks who can just say, oh, I'm sorry, but the only thing we can do is pull the increased unemployment lever. We don't make the rules. There's nothing we can do. Let's go back to the interview. The tools that we have, though, are basically saying to somebody, everyone's paying more for gas and groceries, and that's really hard. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to throw 10 million of them out of work so that we all don't have to share that burden. Why aren't we attacking corporate profit in any way? Because that's been estimated to be 30% of inflation, 40% of inflation. I don't think it's a tenable view that all of a sudden corporations became greedy. Of course, there's monopolies in the economy, John, and we should be for They've been much bragging more about it on much their more earnings calls. Than we were. They're, they're on their earnings calls, they're saying our profits have never been higher. We're killing it. The markups during the pandemic are sometimes they're saying 70% of what they were. If there was a huge increase in the demand for shrewd television commentary. I imagine the demand for what you do would go way up. And I imagine you convert that into higher wages and getting more and getting paid better. You're saying and it's the market at work. Your, I don't think you'd call yourself a gouger um, when you. I would uh, absolutely when, call myself a when gouger when you did that. Um, and by the way, the effect a, of uh, the talk show business is very different than the effect of Exxon Mobil. And that's the only bit of the interview which I say I think was excellent, where I think John Stewart missed a trick because he should have said, yes, I did well out of the pandemic. And guess what? I should be taxed way more than I'm being taxed. Now, I don't have enough background to know if John Stewart is in favor of higher taxes on the rich, but I think that would have been sort of a, a demonstration that he was willing to put his, his money where his mouth was. Um, in any case, let's go to our final clip here. Summers tries to get back at Stewart by highlighting who employs him. 
isn't this show going to be on Apple TV? Correct. And I think Apple TV is worth about five times as much as Exxon. I think Apple's price since the stimulus began, Apple's value has gone up by about $1.2 trillion. Uh, dollars. Right. That's $4,000 for every American just an increase in the value of uh, you, Apple. You just made my do point you, for me. Do you feel that Apple is somehow gouging or doing something wrong? Yes, of course. So, and Exxon is, and okay, Mobile is. So, so let's so talk let about me, Apple. Let's talk about Apple. Do you, do you think okay. Apple should just sell phones for less and not have enough phones? What would you have Apple, what would you have Apple do? You're saying to me, John, Market forces are market forces. And if demand goes up, are you suggesting, young man, that Apple should charge less than they could charge? Let me flip that on you. When there's a tightness in the labor market, what you're saying is the workers shouldn't do the same. That the workers just following the same capitalistic principles that allow Apple to charge more for their phones shouldn't charge more because wage inflation is driving every, inflation. That's not at all what I'm saying, John. That's exactly no, what you're no, saying. Actually, it isn't. Every worker should get as high a wage as they can. It would be a terrible idea. But the to Fed to is going to intervene. The the when, Fed is going no. to intervene to make that not possible. No, the Fed is intervening to control the overall level of demand growth. And what because will that do to, goes, and what will that do to the if labor it goes market? Much faster. What will that than do to the supply, labor market? What it will, will it do to, to the labor market? It look, will it is likely it. to lead to, to looser labor markets. Uh, a somewhat a uh, looser labor market. Exactly. We hope to minimize now, that uh, consequence. It will lead to somewhat a looser labor market. What does a looser labor market mean? It means that you've got higher unemployment, so it's harder to ask for a wage rise. Obviously, the lower unemployment is, the more bargaining power you have with your boss because they can't just say, well, if you want to pay rise, I'll fire you and hire someone else. Right. That That's the real reason why capitalists really don't like low unemployment because they like there to be a reserve a reserve army of, of labor, to use the Marxist terminology, which is to say, we want to be able to discipline you by threatening to sack you, and we can only threaten to sack you if there are some unemployed people willing to take your place, right? Now, I think that interview um, was, as I say, very good. John Stewart came out on top, I think, by most accounts. But in the real world, the Federal Reserve and our Bank of England have just hiked interest rates. Right. So, Barnaby, my question for you. Are the Hawks like Larry Summers, however much they might get owned in an interview on Apple TV, are they still getting their way? Yes. And they'll keep getting their way as long as they have power. That's why it's so important that we've seen in recent months in Britain the rebuilding of union strength. It's only by working people organizing and showing the kind of class consciousness that Larry Summers shows uh, that will change the game here. Um, Larry Summers knows that certain ideas are just taken for granted. You don't attack corporate profits. And it's no coincidence that those ideas are the profits that flow to the people he tends to have dinner with. Um, uh, he has a basic sense of class solidarity. Uh, the ruling class always does. The question is just whether the working class will too. You know, in the last quarter of 2022, corporate profits were higher in Britain than they'd ever been on record, ever since records began. The last quarter of 2022, higher than ever. While people struggle to heat their homes, Shell oil company, doubled their profit to $40 billion, doubled it. Dividends were up 16.5% in 2022, 16.5% increase in one year. So just think of that when people whose pay hasn't risen in a decade, many of those people are uh, supporting the public services that have been shriveled and denied funding. Um, their pay hasn't risen in a decade. They ask for pay rises and they're told we can't afford it. But people who live on share prices um, have seen their pay go up by 16.5% in one year. The inflationary crisis is a crisis of prices rising faster than wages. That's why people struggle. struggle. Um, so to stop prices rising, you could control prices. You could ban certain price rises, as economists like Isabella Weber and others have suggested. You could cut record profits uh, 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 to ensure that to force companies to keep prices down rather than raising prices and profiting. Or 
You could do neither of those things. And you could instead cut wages so that millions of people had even less ability to meet rising prices and to heat their homes and to buy food. It's a choice about how to fight inflation. And the choice is a class question. It's a choice of class war. Who's going to pay the price? This crisis is a short term effect of emerging from lockdown and disrupted supply chains, of price rises from a war in Ukraine, and a long-term effect, too, of sluggish productivity. And the choice to use that triple crisis to attack working-class living standards is a kind of successor in Britain to the Cameron Osborne austerity strategy after 2010. So in that case, the financial crisis that began on Wall Street and in the city of London was used to shut youth centres and to starve disabled people, to shrink the welfare state to meet a long-standing conservative aspiration. Now they want to cut real pay for working class people. They've cut the social wage. They've destroyed many of the institutions of social support for many millions of people in Britain using the financial crisis to launch that attack. Now they want to use this inflationary crisis to launch an attack on people's pay um, while ensuring that profits continue to soar more than ever. It's pretty obvious what's going on here. It is a class attack by those who profit on those who live by wages and the social safety net. It's a class war and it demands a class response, that is unions striking and, uh, and, and community groups and others organizing against this ruling class attack.